Hey, this is Tom Webster, and this is Sounds Profitable for Wednesday, November 8th, 2023, Making the Case for Podcasting. Today, I'm going to tackle the ever-present problem of making an appealing pitch for podcasts to non-listeners. But first, new from Sounds Profitable, The Power of Brands in Podcasts, a podcast landscape study. This new research takes a closer look at respondents for whom podcasts about favorite brands are potentially compelling content. Catch the 30-minute webinar and download the study for free, no registration required, at soundsprofitable.com. Okay, I have written and podcasted ad nauseum, truly, about the fact that podcasting has never really presented itself in any kind of meaningful way to a mainstream audience. But this week, I want to tackle a slightly different question. What if you could sell podcasting as a medium, not just a podcast, but podcasting at scale to the mainstream American or fill in your country public? If I gave you a million dollars to promote podcasting in general, what would you say? Well, it's not the easiest question to answer, but I do think about it quite a bit. Here's what I think the biggest disconnect between what podcasters think and what non-listeners think is. The latter will often tell you that one of the main reasons they don't listen to podcasts is that podcasts don't provide anything they don't already have. It's redundant entertainment, in other words. The source of the disconnect is this. Podcasters know that these people are just wrong, right? There truly is a podcast for everything. And you can't say that about radio or TV shows, can you? Surely you can't find a radio show catering to your love of restoring furniture or a recap show for The Amazing Race, right? So podcasters presume, and often correctly, that non-listeners are just wrong about this and just haven't been exposed to the right show. But there is an equal and opposite reaction here. Many people are perfectly happy with their current media diet of radio, music, and especially video, and they aren't wrong. If you take the average talk radio show and the average out of 5 million-ish podcast, the radio show's probably better in a bunch of ways. There's a lot of talent in broadcast media, and the production values are often a lot higher. One of my favorite misperceptions to correct is when I talk about audio with VC or investor types who just assume radio will completely evaporate when we can all get Spotify in our cars. Well, a lot of people really like Elvis Duran and really like local traffic and weather. So don't assume the broadcast option is just the best they can do by default. We have to find a different way to talk about podcasting in a positive way, and I think we need to do it fairly soon because there are some entities out there that are doing it for us and doing it in a way that doesn't necessarily benefit everyone, does it? But we aren't doing it. We aren't doing it because we only have so much time and treasure to spend. And as an industry, we spend our resources talking about our show and not about podcasting. And I can't blame anyone for that, but it's got to be done. Now, here's why. If I send out an email marketing campaign about the new Chris Hemsworth action movie on Netflix, let's call it three extraction. You have a number of crucial pieces of information already in place. You know what Netflix is. You know what a movie is. You know who Chris Hemsworth is. And you sort of know that an action movie with Chris Hemsworth will feature him doing Chris Hemsworth things. Now, that's a lot of information already included in your silent script about this. So if Netflix promotes Extraction 4 next year, they really don't have to do a lot of heavy lifting here as long as Extraction 3 was pretty good, just an awareness campaign will probably pay off. Consider the same exercise with a Chris Hemsworth podcast. You can't just get away with check out the new Chris Hemsworth podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Now here, with the same exercise, many people might know the actor But do they know what a podcast by him would be like? Do they know where to get one? Do they know what a podcast is or if they even want one? Do they know if they would even like it if they can't see the actor? Do we hear him bashing people with Mjolnir? The silent script here is lacking a lot of details because the industry hasn't done a good job priming the pump. In that sense, 
building a Chris Hemsworth podcast might as well be selling a Jason Statham fountain pen. The Jason Statham fans don't know that they want a fountain pen. And the fountain pen people don't get the Jason Statham thing. So, boy, careful with that point, mate. So what is the answer? The answer, as in all advertising, is that there is no one answer, but there is the right answer at the right time for the right group of people. That doesn't make it rocket surgery. It just means that there's a little bit more work to be done, and I hope you'll agree with me, that it's work worth doing. The work to be done is to do a better job understanding non-listeners, understanding what really motivates them, and to accept the fact that they are right. They really don't need you. No one needs a podcast. But everybody wants a something. And the key to expanding podcasting is not to educate people about what we do. It's to listen to what they want and appreciate who they are. One of my favorite examples of this was the launch of Lexus in America. I think a lot of people take Lexus for granted as a luxury brand, but don't remember just how remarkable it was for a Japanese automaker to enter a market that has, had historically been dominated by German brands like BMW, Mercedes, and Audi. They weren't going to out-heritage them, they didn't have the track record to go higher end, and they lacked the performance technology that some of the German brands had perfected for decades. Instead, they talked to the people who could afford to buy their cars, white-collar workers with significant exurban commutes, to see what their lives were like. What they learned was that the commutes required to maintain the lifestyles they wanted compressed their days enough to create a fair amount of stress. There was never enough time at home or at work to feel like they were in control of either. The commute itself was a kind of oasis, but often one equally fraught with stress from traffic and honking horns. So the engineers at Toyota launched a car designed for that and not around performance or safety or any of the other nearly commodified features and benefits offered by most luxury cars. Instead, they engineered their vehicle and their messaging around one word, quiet. And that is the word they launched with in commercials and commercials that featured just how quiet the world became when you closed the reassuringly solid door of a Lexus. Now, the claim wouldn't have worked if the car weren't actually built to deliver, of course. But this was truly a product driven by an unspoken consumer need, and it succeeded very well. So how do we translate these lessons to podcasting? I think sometimes we forget about the most basic benefits of switching. We get lost in the weeds describing how cool a specific show is, or we end up being too vague. It's really cool content you can't get anywhere else. I think we could be more successful talking about what podcasting isn't or doesn't do in a way that gets at how a podcast can make someone feel or reduce the friction in some part of their life. Like I said before, there's no single easy answer here, but here are a few stabs, five in fact, at rotating your thinking a little bit to making podcasts more relatable to non-listeners. Number one, driving. Driving is stressful enough without having to jump around from station to station to skip commercials or find a better song or change playlists. You don't text and drive, so why try to manage all of that as well? Put on one podcast, keep your eyes on the road, with your perfect commute. Number two, speaking of commercials, wouldn't it be nice to listen to an engaging show that doesn't stop for 10 minutes of terrible ads? Podcasts give you more of what you want, great conversations and content, and less of what you don't compared to commercial radio. Number three, if you've turned on your radio or local TV lately, you're bombarded with negativity. Millions of people do not want to hear about Trump, Biden, politics in general, or a steady stream of disturbing global news. What else is the average commercial talk radio station giving these people? Not much. Podcasting engages the mind positively, with a break from the incessant doom and negativity of the network news or blowhard talk radio hosts. Number four, do you have more time to yourself today than you did a year or two ago? I didn't think so. Podcasts are a way to claw back time for yourself. Take a mini vacation wherever you are, whenever you want. Why wait to hear your favorite shows? Make them wait for you and take a bath with your favorite podcast. And number five, this last one, I have to credit my wife, Tamsin, with. She has powered through both Duolingo and Babbel to learn Italian in the last six months. And what is nice about some of these platforms is that they are gamified and allow you to feel like you're leveling up in a very quantified way. 
Turns out that's a very satisfying feeling and one that adults don't often get access to after they finish school. Like those platforms, podcasts let you level up in between other aspects of your life without making huge commitments. Everyone wants to feel better or smarter. They just often don't have time for a book or a course. Podcasting lets you put your brain to good use. And so on. In short, let's not be afraid to put the gloves on when we talk about podcasts. We have spent enough time telling people about what podcasts are from a purely descriptive or technical sense. But why should you care? What do podcasts do better? What evil do they take away from this planet? What existing stressor can we identify that podcasting makes easier? This is the kind of work we need to do. We're never going to be able to promote podcasts as getting colors cleaner or being 30% bigger or being preferred by four out of five dentists. We have to think about what else our audience could choose instead and make a sharper case before someone makes it for us. Thanks again for listening to this podcast, Making the Case for Podcasting. This episode is hosted on Art19. For Sounds Profitable, I'm Tom Webster. We'll see you next week.